This video is for the final exam review for the fall for Algebra 1. Uh, this review video will cover pages 1 through 4 and any of the questions on those pages. So starting out with problem 1, in order to solve, we are trying to get V by itself. We use GIMDAS or PIMDAS and work backwards. If I box my variable, the thing on the same side as the box not in the box is 6. In order to move the 6, I will subtract because that puts it on the opposite side. And anytime I cross this middle line, I have to do the opposite operation. 24 minus 6 is 18, and I bring down the box. Still trying to get V by itself, I need to divide by negative 3. I divide because there's no sign operation in between negative 3 and V, so I can see that is multiplication. And when I divide, I get negative 6. If you wanted to check your work, you could plug in negative 6 here. So 6 minus 3 times negative 6. Put that in the calculator and make sure that you get uh, 24. On problem 2, I need to get rid of the parentheses first. So negative 3 times C and negative 3 times 5. From here, I'm trying to get C by itself, so I will move the 15 by doing the opposite operation. In this case, the opposite of a negative is adding. I bring the box down exactly like I see it, and 12 plus 15 is 27, and then divide by negative 3. So C equals negative 9. Again, to check, I can plug negative 3 times negative 9 plus 5 into the calculator and make sure that I get 12. For problem three, I need to get rid of my parentheses by distributing the negative two. Note that the five has no change for the very beginning step. The five stays exactly the same. It is out, not next to the parentheses, so I will not do anything with that. Negative two times x is negative two x. Negative two times negative three is a positive six. From here, I need to combine my like terms, so the negative two x and 63 stay as they are. 5 plus 6 is 11. To move the 2x, I subtract 11 from both sides. So negative 2x equals 52. Divide by negative 2, and x equals, I believe it is 26, but let me double check. Yeah, negative, ooh, negative 26. Again, in order to check, you can plug in 26 for x and do 5 times negative 2 parentheses negative 26 minus 3. Put it on in exactly like you see it and make sure you get 63. For problem 4, I have two distributions that I need to take care of here. Notice that the 7x does not change. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And then on the right side, 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 8 is 32. On the left side, I need to combine my like terms. 7x's plus 2x's is a total of 9x's. Nothing else needs to be moved or changed. From here, I'm going to put my x's on the same side. I am moving the 4x because it is the smaller of the x's. You can move the 9 because you want to put it on the other side. It doesn't matter as long as you put the x's together and use the opposite operation to move them. So 9 minus 4x's is a total of 5x's. I will then move the 10. So I have 5x equals 42. Divide by 5 on both sides. And 42 divided by 5 is 8.4. Problems 5 and 6, we have two different things, or the sim something similar going on here, but different than anything we've seen on 1 through 4. Remember that in order to get rid of this, you need to butterfly it out. So negative 2 times r plus 1 will equal 3 times 10. So I'm going to distribute negative 2 times r, negative 2 times 1, and 3 times 10. Now I solve like I did starting on problem 1. Add 2 to both sides, so negative 2r equals 32. And divide by negative 2 to get a final answer of 
negative 16. So again, when you see a problem like this, remember that you need to cross multiply. Same thing on problem six. I'm going to cross multiply and it is negative four times all of x plus one and then five times all of two x plus two. So negative four times x, negative four times one, five times two x, five times two. Now this problem is similar to problem four. I'm gonna move the, the smaller x, the negative four x, to the other side through the opposite operation. 10x plus 4x is 14x plus 10. I'm then going to move the 10 through the opposite operation, which would be a subtraction, and then divide both sides by 14, and negative 14 divided by a positive 14 is a negative one. Again, with all of these, you can take your answers and plug back into your original equation, plug it in anywhere you see that letter, and make sure that it works correctly on the calculator. Problem 7 and 8 ask us to write an equation and solve. Ben joined the Fitness Palace for an initial membership fee of $55 and $32 per month. If he paid a total of $279, how many months was he a member? So his initial fee, his one-time fee, was $55. He then pays $32 per month. Now, we don't know how many months. That's what they asked us to find. So our variable is going to be M for months. This is going to equal the total money that he spent, which is 297. In order to solve, we move the 55 because it's next to M but not directly attached. So 32M equals 297 minus 55, which is 224. We then divide both sides by 32, and we get seven months. <coughs> Problem 8 tells us that the first decorator charges $40 for initial consultation and then $80 per hour. Another decorator just charges $90 per hour. How long is the job for where the two decorators charge the same price? So where does decorator 1 equal decorator 2? Decorator 1 charges $40 for the consultation and $80 per hour. Decorator 2 charges $90 per hour. In order to solve, I move 80 hours because it's smaller. So 40 equals 10H divide by 10, and 40 divided by 10 is 4. So 4 hours before they equal the same amount. Problem 9, if the perimeter of the rectangle below is 42, find the value of X. So we know that with a perimeter of a rectangle, you will add up all the sides, so I'm filling in my sides. Left side is the same as right, top is the same as bottom. For my base equation, I'm going to combine my like terms. So I have 4x's plus x plus 4x's plus x for a total of 10x's. Plus 3 minus 2 plus 3 minus 2 is a total of 2. And that equals my perimeter. So remember, for perimeter, we add up all the sides. In order to solve for x, I will move 2 to the other side through subtraction. So 10x equals 40. Divide everything by 10. 40 divided by 10 is 4. Note that it does just ask you for the value of x. They do not ask you to like plug back in or anything like that, but make sure you read the problems to be careful. Problem 9, we're solving for d. So we move 9 to the other side. So negative 3d is greater than negative 18. Divide both sides by a negative. Because I divided by a negative, my sign is going to flip. And negative 18 divided by negative 3 is 6. So d is less than 6. Problem 11, in order to solve, we need to distribute 6 times t and 6 times 1. I'm going to move the 3t to the other side because it's smaller. So I'm following the same steps as I did on the front. The only difference is if you divide by a negative, you have to flip your sign. I'm moving this 6 with t onto the other side. And note that negative 6 minus 6 is negative 12. Those do not cancel. I divide by 3, and because I divided by a 
positive, my answer will, or my sign will stay the same. So negative 4 is greater than t. Or you could also write it t is less than negative 4. Note that when I rewrote it, I didn't flip my sign. I flipped the entire inequality. I switched the entire inequality. Tammy wants to earn money by mowing lawns for her neighbors. She currently has 75 and plans to mow lawns until she has at least 200 in savings. If she earns 20 for each lawn she mows, how many more lawns does she need to mow to reach her goal? So in her savings, she already has $75 and she's adding 20 for every lawn. She wants her savings to be greater than or equal to 200. So I will use a greater than sign for what I'm trying to find. I want it to be greater than or equal to 200. In order to solve, I subtract 75 from both sides. So 20L is greater than or equal to 125. Divide by 20, and when I do 125 divided by 20 in my calculator, I get L is greater than or equal to 6.75. So she would need to mow at least seven because you can't mow 0.25 of a lawn. 13 asked me to create a table that represents a function. Remember, a function means x's don't repeat. So you can come up with anything you want as long as your x's are different. Your y's could be exactly the same the entire time. Now for something that is not a function, this means your x's would repeat. They can repeat once, they can repeat five times. It doesn't really matter as long as there is a repeat. So notice that the y's don't really matter. It's all about the x's with functions. Problem 15 asks me to find the range for f of x equals 3, negative 3x squared plus 4 when the domain is 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So this is going to be all on the calculator. On my calculator, I'm going to, or in my calculator, I should say, I'm going to type in the function they gave me into y equals. They gave me negative 3x squared plus 4. I'm just going to double check that. Yep. And I can go second graph to look at my table. When x is 1, because remember domain is x, when x is 1, y is 1. And then we need negative 2 and negative 3. So when x is negative 2, y is negative 8. And when x is negative 3, y is negative 23. So negative 8 and 23. And remember that we write them all separately because we are talking about discrete data. So we have x is 1, x is negative 2, x is negative 3. So my range is 1, negative 8, negative 23. For 16, there's two different ways to do it. You can plug this in by hand. Remember that whatever they give you inside the parentheses is an x uh, value. So you can write it by hand and then plug it into the calculator. Or you can put um, 2 minus 3x in y equals and go look at the table like we just did. No matter what way you choose, you should get the same thing. So in my table, when x is negative 3, y is 11. Or if I type this into my calculator, Two minus three times negative three, I get eleven. Come on. So either way, whether you do it by hand or in the calculator, you will get eleven. Seventeen asks me for the domain and range of this graph. Um, so this is starting at the point negative three, one, two, three, four, five. Remember that domain is x values, range is y's, doctor x y. So x starts at negative 3, and range starts at 5. We can use our sticky notes, or you can um, put a little frame from the dot around your line. Looking at my x line, x's go left or right. So my starting from the dot, my arrow is going to the right. My x's get greater than 
when it goes to the right. So as I follow this, X's are getting bigger. And because I have a filled in bubble or filled in dot, I put the line under the inequality. The Y's are going down, so the Y's are getting less than. I can see that from the up or down arrow. This one's going down, so on the Y's going down means less than, and still have a filled in bubble. 18, my two points are negative four, four, and two, negative two. So remember with this one, when we have two endpoints, we have two inequalities, we always write them least to greatest so that we can use less than signs. So looking at my x's, I have negative four and two, negative four is smaller, two is bigger. When x is negative four, I have a filled in bubble, so I put the line under the inequality. With my y's, I have four and negative two, negative two is smaller, four is the bigger. And at four, I have the filled in bubble, so I put the line under that inequality. For 19, domain is still looking at your x value, so my lowest x value is out here at a negative nine. And we assume that there's a value there because we can't see that there's not. And it goes all the way out to a positive seven. My y's from bottom to top start all the way down here at a negative six and go all the way up to a positive eight. So remember domain is X, range is Y's, X's go left to right, domain goes bottom to top. Problem 20 tells us that the table below shows the total tuition costs, uh, T, and the number of semester hours taken at Blinn for H, and then they ask us to write a function that would represent the relationship. So what I'm gonna do is put this exactly like I see it into stat edit because anytime I have a table or two or more points, I can use stat edit. So in my calculator, I click stat edit or enter. I input this exactly like I see it. So my X's are one, two, three, and four. My Y's are 553, 581, 609, and 637. So I make sure that my calculator in my tape, my table in my calculator looks exactly like the table on my paper. From here we click stat calc four, enter as many times as it takes, and we have 28 for our slope and 525 for our starting. So to write this, our tuition cost is 28 times H plus 525. Notice that they did not use X and Y, they used H and T. Rate of change is the same thing as slope, so 28 cost per hour, so 28 Y per X or T per H. And the value for T of 16, remember they're giving you an X value, or in this case an H value, so 28 times 16 plus 525. I can plug that into my calculator exactly like I see it, 28 times 16 plus 525, and that equals 973. You can also do what we talked about on the other problems, put this into y equals and look at your table when x is 16. 21 says, suppose the total cost C of running a car is $25 per day, D plus an initial fee of $100. Write a function that best describes the relationship if D represents the number of days the car is rented. So our cost equals the initial fee of $100 plus 25 per day. We don't know how many days, so D for days. It does not matter if you write it 25D plus 100. It does not matter. I just find it easier to identify the one time fee first. Rate of change is going to be whatever is with D. So this is going to be $25 per day. So 25C per D, cost per day. Total to rent a car for nine days. They are giving us a D value there. So our cost is going to be 100 plus 25 times 9. We will plug in 9 for days. So 100 plus 25 times 9. And we get $325. And then D tells us find the number of days. So they're asking us for D if the total cost is 275, so this one we're plugging in 275 and solving for D. So when we solve for D, we have to get D completely by itself, so we subtract 100 from both sides. So 175 equals 25D, 
divide by 25 and D equals 7. Let me double check that, but I'm pretty sure it's 7. 7 is confirmed, so 7 days. So remember, there's a difference. If you're given the inside value, you can put it inside the calculator. If you're given the outside value, you have to work backwards to solve.